everyone. Uh, the recording is uh, should be going. I hope I didn't poke you guys in the face there. <laughs> we have such a crazy setup here. I just upgraded my tech and I had to go back to recording on my phone. So uh, please, thank you so much for bearing with us. And we're going to get right to our painting. We are going to paint a beautiful perfume bottle with Derwent Ink Tense Pencils. Now, the reason I chose Derwent Ink Tense Pencils for this project is because once you put down a layer and you liquefy it with water, it's very sheer, it's very vibrant, and it locks down to the paper. So you can keep layering up without worrying about lifting up the colors underneath. Um, but if you are just kind of maybe testing the waters and you don't have them yet, you're not sure about them, feel free to follow along with whatever you have. So I'd like to switch to the overhead camera here so we can get started with our project since we only have an hour and we are going to get right into it. So I decided to try this in a couple other colorways just in case you want some inspiration. I did use some colors from the new collection of Derwent Intense Pencils, but of course you can use whatever colors you want. And you don't need to have a ton of colors, just um, I like to have a variety of, for the golden areas, I like to have a variety of kind of like orangey, golden, and brown colors. I like to have some grays for my darker shadows like a I have a dark purple and a Payne's gray you can just use a Payne's gray or even a black if that's what you have and then uh, because I'm doing shades of pink I've got some just a few different reds and pinks so that I could get a good variety of my colors and uh, we're going to start on the watercolor paper with our pattern already imported there already transferred on and the pattern was available on the Michaels class page but if you didn't Get a chance to download it when that page was active you can download it from um, the time lapse video i posted on my youtube channel the frugal crafter where i showed this out i did post it in a separate location just um, in case people were a little late to the party because i know some people catch the replay and then uh, that page isn't always active i want you to start with your main color that's the lighter variety so i have for instance a reddish and a pinkish so i have carmine pink which is a pretty um, a pretty dark reddish color, and I have this flamingo or pink flamingo, which is a more mid tone. So I'm going to go with this mid tone color and I'll save the darker color for later. And what I'm going to do is using the edge of the pencil, I am going to go in and give the area that's going to be the darkest. So what I'm going to do is just scoop this over so you can see it. I'm going to put this area that is going to be the darkest with a, just a you don't want to put a lot of pressure and just give it kind of a, a medium coat of product, I would say. You should still be able to see the grain of the paper. And then I just want you to use whatever, um, I would use a flat or a filbert just because round brushes can carry a little too much water. Just a, a small flat brush and liquefy it and see what color that comes out to. Now we can build it up. This is a very buildable medium. So if we decide that we want it darker, we can do that. But if we decide we want it, we want it to remain light, we can leave it. If it's too dark, you can take a paper towel while it's wet and blot. But once it dries, it's going to be locked in that paper and you're not going to have that, <laughs> that ability to do that anymore. And I also like a flat brush because I can kind of scrub a bit and really make sure I liquefy all of that color. If you if you ever had ink tense uh, pencils not like reactivate when you put more water on them afterwards, it's because you didn't originally liquefy that wash all the way. And the more textured your paper is, the more you're going to have to work at it because the hills on the paper are going to grab more of the media and you'll have to just work a little bit harder to get those specks dissolved. Now a tip that I like to do sometimes is just scribble off the um, pencil onto something else and you can use like a frosted cutting board for that. I like to use my because it's just got a really nice grit and oftentimes, especially if I'm doing something where I'm going to be wetting the entire paper, I will have masking tape just on my, uh, just taping my stuff down. So I'm just going to stick a little piece down there just so I can demo this. But what I do is I just scribble the pencil on my masking tape. And this is when I want to have a, like a really sheer color that might be a little bit lighter. 
Actually, I probably shouldn't tape that to my paper because I don't want to accidentally get color on there. I should just stick it down on the stick it down on the paper by itself. And then I can make a lighter version that I can spread out even further to get on the rest of this bottle here. And you have until the paint dries or until the uh yeah, until the paper dries to spread that color out. And don't worry if it's not perfectly uniform because glass has like thicknesses and thinnesses throughout it and you're going to have um, kind of like an undulating bit of, of color and streaks and that's what makes it look like glass. Okay, we've got our first layer. It's a little bit darker on the inside of our bottle and it's a little bit... Um, it's a little bit lighter on the edges. I just want to make sure you can see both of those. Everything's backwards in the camera, so it's kind of confusing. Okay, so I think I'll also do the same technique to take some of my Payne's gray or whatever gray or black you're using. I'm going to scribble some of that. Actually, I'm going to move that over just a little bit more. And I'm going to use a flat brush to put in some, some of the facets there. Flat brush works great because you kind of get that like facet uh, effect without really having to do much work. Make little slices of little streaks and slices, shapes the hard edges. To take a golden kind of golden ochre color this is called sicilian yellow and i believe that's one of the new colors but if you have like a yellow ochre or a gold ochre anything that look kind of like um uh like a mustardy rusty brown brownish yellow color that's going to work and i'm going to color in this little um collar area And I'm going to wet that down. So this is very much, um, it's kind of very much like color and wet it down and layer up. It's once you break it down to the easy steps, it's a, the simple steps, it's actually quite easy to, uh, to do projects like this, glass and whatnot. Now, anytime you have a color and you have something faceted, it's going to reflect the colors that are around it. So I'm going to take some of this yellow. I'm going to scribble it out. And make sure when you're adding water to your brush, you want to make sure you don't get water beads up here in the ferrule because that can slide down and really mess up your project. The reason I like to use flats and filberts and traditional brushes rather than uh, water brushes for a project like this because I don't want too much water. And I find that doing it this way allows you to control it and you can check for any, um, any little bits of water on the ferrule and you can really be precise and you don't make the mistakes that you might if you have too much water on your brush. I use a shallow little dish and that's it. You could use the lid of a of a um, spaghetti sauce jar or something like that. You don't need a lot of water for this. And I feel like a water brush would give you a little bit too much. Now I'm going to pick up some of the pink that I had from the, uh, the layer there with the glass and I'm going to add little bits of that in here too to reflect them. Just little slices. I'm also going to take some of that yellow that we scroll out on our masking tape, and I'm going to add that into the gold, the exterior parts of the glass, because that's also going to catch some of this light from the golden collar and spread it around. Now, a tip: If you, if you can probably see how this paper's starting to um, kind of warp a little bit, 
something that I do when I have to um, flatten out paper, I will let it dry completely. I will put it between two pieces of copy paper and I'll flip it upside down so the painting is down, but it's between two pieces of copy paper and I'll iron it on the back. And that will usually flatten it right up. So if you have that, uh, that happened to you, the only thing you might want to worry or, or maybe do that before you add any mixed media, such as like colored pencil to it, which might melt, um, you can really get your paper flat again. And if it wants to resist you ironing it, it's still kind of struggling. You could gently spray the back side of the paper with a little bit of water and you could try ironing it again. And that, that shouldn't lift any of your intense products and it should give you a nice flat paper ready to frame. Now this right here has very a very minimal warp to it, but and I didn't iron it. But if that bothered me or it was a problem with framing, then I could I could definitely iron that out and get that uh, to go back the way I want it. Okay, um, let's see. Hey, That's Lindsay, little... Lindsay, yeah. it's Molly. Did you? I assume you use cold press paper for this, right? Yes, I used your watercolor, the Derwent watercolor paper. Okay. Okay, and they also have uh, water. Do they still have the ink tense paper, or is that all been like kind of? Is that the same as the watercolor paper now? No, they we have watercolor paper and the ink tense paper. Oh, okay, cool. You do yep. both. Wonderful. Okay, so I'm gonna take the pencil and I'm gonna add the golden into the little part where the spray comes out of the little golden sprayer area. I'll pull up the reference back in camera in just a second. Or you probably have it if you printed out the um, if you printed out the picture. I'm also going to take some brown. I'm using willow, but whatever color you have, I'm going to add some of that into the edges. And that's going to give it the shading on the side, which is going to make it look more round. Hey, Lindsay, it's Molly again. Sorry. Yeah. Just the audio is a little tough to hear. So as you're transitioning between pencils, would you mind just showing the pencil or like the paint from like the top as you're like, as you go to switch colors, just so people can see. Oh, and sure. for those of you that are wondering if Lindsay can be a little louder, I apologize, but we're working through some technical challenges with Zoom. So it has nothing to do with her audio. It has everything to do with the software. So my apologies. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I wish it was... Uh... I wish it was some way I could I could boost that up, but I'll try to speak a little louder too. Um, so this is Willow. And I'm gonna add, I added it to the edge there, and I'm gonna add it on the edges here as well. And I'm also going to go right along the ridge, right underneath the ridge, because it's almost like um it indents in the center and it comes out a little bit on the sides. I'm gonna add it uh, towards the center on either side of that ridge. I think I'm gonna outline the outside of the ridge too because um, I didn't have a very good, I didn't have that drawn out very well on mine. And I'll do a couple little stripes of this color just so it can have a little bit of a reflection. Going back to the brush, you can use a small round if you prefer. I got a little too much water in there, so I'm gonna blot it on a paper towel. And I'm also going to wet this area here, this sprayer area. Now, if you want to have a really crisp look, you can take your pencils and use them over the wet um, the wet paper. I'm gonna use this on the edges of the wet paper. My, my pencil's pretty sharp and these leads are very strong. So I can go in there with a little bit of pressure, almost burnish that down and give it a more shiny appearance. And I'm going to do that with the gray as well, the Payne's gray. If you have a different gray or black, please feel free to use that. And I'm gonna put in some reflections. And I'm gonna try to keep everything nice and straight and crisp. Uh, 
I am also going to go along the top of the golden collar area with my Payne's Gray. And I'm adding some definition while I'm at it in here. Glass is created by the contrast of dark shadows and bright white highlights. So when we're putting down our colors going forward, we're gonna to wanna to make sure we're getting those nice crisp details down. So that's why I put some really sharp gray details on the collar there. And I'm gonna do the same thing going through on the, um, the glass part here. I'm going right in with the gray. My gray is pretty sharp, it's still the Payne's gray. And I am going to put some pretty firm lines. No, these are not being liquefied yet. So I'm going to have to be careful if I go in there with a the brush. These will still, um, these will still be, act can be activated. So you just got to be careful. Molly, I can see if there's a way to turn up my my volume here, just in case. Let me see if I can do something. Uh, I am so sorry, guys. I have been troubleshooting the audio and everything, and it's. Um, I wish there was something else I could do. The only the only other thing I think I could do would be to switch my cameras around and plug my and use the computer audio but that's that's still we tried Lindsay, that and that was no i think i think it's been a little bit louder so i wouldn't worry about it i just keep working um i do have one question someone yeah. asked which sharpener you prefer do you have a certain sharpener near nearby that you can show someone yes honestly i just use a, a electric because i don't have a very good um sharpening technique so i just use this electric sharpener I think most electric electric sharpeners are fine. Um, just make sure that it will take because the Derwent pencils are kind of chunky, so you got to make sure it's going to take up to an eight millimeter lead. So mine's kind of dirty because I use it every day. Um, but I find that the only things I can't use in this is pastel pencils that will ruin it. But um, as long as you have the uh, the six to eight mm millimeter pencil, it'll take all your Derwents. And it really works great. And it doesn't break even like your um, Chroma Flow or your Color Soft. It's in light fast. It's gentle with those. So that would be my recommendation. With pastel pencils, I use the handheld Derwent pastel pencil sharpener. Um, and that works really well for the pastel pencils. Or sometimes I actually will take my pastel pencils to my husband's workshop and use his belt sander to sand them to like sharpen them that way uh, when I want a really long point. Um, but that's a little extra. Uh, one thing I might mention, I think closed captions, I think, doesn't Zoom have closed captions? Maybe people can turn the closed captions on and that might be helpful. Um, hopefully that would work. And um, I am going to keep going on with my dark paints gray. Speaking as loudly as I can. If you have a gray that's not as dark as you want it, what you could do is wet the area and go in with the uh, with the pencil and it will give you a darker one. So that's something to consider as well. These lines are the ones that were on the pattern that I provided. But if you feel like kind of freestyling and you want to go um, add a, you know, an extra line here and there, please feel free to. I'm going to add a little bit of a little bit of shading in here with this gray. Pressed a little too hard there. Now I'm going to grab some of the, um, let's see, I'm you, you can use the, I got both cherry red and carmine pink, but I think I'll go with carmine. I think that's going to be dark enough. 
I'm going to add some shading here around the edge of the area where it's liquid, basically. And I'm going to go over the gray shadow area that I put here in the bottom of the liquid area. I want the liquid to be the darkest part of my perfume bottle or the darkest like full full area anyway. And I'm also going to add a little bit of the yellow. This was the Sicilian yellow, but any like warm yellow ochre color is going to be fine. And this is going to warm up our pink. And I'm also going to do the um, little straw that's in there that brings the perfume up. All right, I'm going to add some water with the flat brush here. Sometimes to control the water, I'll just kind of wipe the brush across my finger. That will get like the extra, the extra off. Or sometimes you can just scrape it on the edge of your water container and that will be just about right. I think I want a little bit more bold color, but I don't want to go over this with a pencil. If I do that at this point, I'm going to leave really dark lines that will be hard to rub out. So I'm going to use my masking tape palette trick and do that when I want to add more color onto a wet area, but I want it to be smooth. Sure, I think I actually might use the cherry red there. Let's see. That's all right. We're going to get it in there anyway, so might as well do it now. Now I feel like I'd like a little more definition on the outside of this. So while this is still a little bit wet, I can go in with my sharp carmine pink pencil and I can outline it a bit and just kind of really intensify that edge where the liquid meets the solid glass. You can also very, very carefully, and what I recommend doing is take your water, make a drop. See how I made like a little, a little water drop? And then put the pencil lead in the water drop. That keeps you from getting the, um, getting the water on the wood. And then I am going to go right around the edge. And this is carmine pink, but you can use whatever color you prefer. What I would recommend is whatever color you want your bottle to be, choose a light, medium, and dark of that color, and then you can make it however, whatever color you like. I'm going to start adding some of the detail. I'm going to move this so I don't get my hands in it and then spread it on my painting here. I'm going to start adding some of the reflections with the pink on the edge of the uh, bottle here. I'm filling in some of the shapes that I had sketched on.
If you have an area that seems a little wishy-washy, you can go and define it with your pencils. And if you're not sure if you've added enough, you can go ahead and liquefy it and see how you feel after that. So at this point, I'm going to, I think I'll go in with a round brush because then I can get a little more detail if I need to. I'm wiping the extra water, make sure there's no beads of water on your ferrule. And I am just going to kind of push the pigment out to the edge of the glass because the edges of your glass will tend to have more concentrated color. And as I go over the areas that had the dark, the panes gray, I can very gently kind of graze over them with a wet brush and that will make them appear a lot crisper and darker. But I'm gonna rinse my brush before I go back into that really bright red color. Each layer will add another bit of sparkle and dimension to our painting. Let's let the bottle dry and go back and work on the faceted area of the top of the stopper there. I'm going to go in with the I think I'll use the Payne's Gray. I was using some purple grape on when I designed this, but I don't think it's really necessary to have that color as well, unless, you, well, well, you know what? I did use it, so I'll use it. This is dark purple, rather, not purple grape. Kind of like a grayish purple. It's, it's very much like a Payne's Gray with just a little more color to it. So what I'm doing here is just putting in lines, shapes. I'm doing triangles. Um, squares, this area here where th there's a hollow in the cap around the sprayer, I'm drawing that in a bit. I'll tend to freeform here a little bit too and I'll be like where's a boring space that could use a little bit more decoration and I'll put in some more shapes. There's no facets right in the center. In the center, it's kind of um, like this area here is actually just like flat glass. But it's not like anyone's going to be looking at the perfume bottle right next to your painting. So if you want to put facets in there, then by all means, you can do that. Doing these little uh, angled lines here because it does kind of facet or turn as it indents to the where it meets the collar where the cap attaches and I'm going to add a little bit of shadow on each side of the hollow and I'm going to go in with my small round brush 
Oops, I had too much water on there. Let's blot that. Those colors really wake up when you add the water, so it can be a little startling when you see that um, that bright color, that dark color come. But you need those contrasts, so don't be don't be worried by that. If I have a couple areas, I might like in the same tone. I might just pull the color around. Uh, where I have that purple, that should probably be more of a gray, but we're going to go with it. Yeah, that's way too purple, but you know what? I'm just going to scrub it a bit. I think I might blot it. It will be fine. If you do it once, it's a mistake, but if you keep repeating it, it becomes a design element and it will look fine. All right, I am going to, while that's still kind of damp, I am going to sharpen my painting's gray. So if you have headphones in, well, you know what? It probably won't be that loud because everything has been so quiet. Uh, I'm gonna sharpen this real quick just to give it a point. You don't want a pin sharp uh, point on this because it will break. They are, you know, they're, they're still colored pencils at the end of the day. I'm also going to put some little reflections in here and there. Now I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be working more dry on dry as we proceed so that we can, um, we can keep those details. But I do feel like I need some more from Payne's Gray up here because I feel like it got a little overpowered by the purple. So I might fill in some of these sections that I made with the gray. And go a little bit bolder with my um, reflections and my refractions. And to ground it, I want to make sure I do have a nice dark line on the bottom, the occlusion shadow where the object would be touching the surface. Oops. Don't press that hard though. I'm just gonna kind of erase that. Let's see. I'm gonna try to use the eraser and just kind of press into that so I can lift up that gray mark that as long as you don't liquefy it, you should be able to erase it with like a, maybe I can use this electric eraser. Yeah, that'll work pretty good. These, these little electric erasers work really well for, um, getting those little drop pencil pieces. And then anything that rem remains, I can touch up with a white gel pen if I need to. All right, uh, let's see. I'm gonna go in with the cherry red. I wanna bring in some more vibrant, um, vibrant reds. I'm going to go over some areas that I think are a little too uh, light.
and let me grab my tape back so I just grab a fresh piece of tape. I want to do some like stippling on the edges because there's a texture on the edge of the glass, probably so you don't slip it when you carry it or something. So I want to get that down there, but it's going to be easier for me to stipple it on with a paintbrush. So I'll take the cherry red and just scribble it out, and then I will use my round brush, liquefy it. Make sure I don't have any extra water on the ferrule. And I'm going to just kind of stipple that and tap it in on the edges for that um, texture. And I can also t I can also paint in any little details and liquefy any bits of that red that I just drew on as well. And I can also liquefy the gray, the Payne's gray. Just make sure you rinse off your brush if you go from gray to a really bright like red area, otherwise you're going to have some staining. those black areas with the tip of that brush. I like to use the small round brushes if I do have a little bit of detail that I want to get, but if I'm trying to get an even area, I'll go with more of my flat or filbert brushes because it just is easier, I think, to manipulate water-soluble pencil material like that. I want to smooth out. I've got a bit of a rough edge there, so I want to smooth that out. Sometimes I find it easier to turn my paper around and use a flat or a filbert for this because they just have a little bit more uh, stiffness to them and you can keep that edge a little bit better. All right, back to the stippling on the other side. But I kind of, kind of got off on a tangent there. Do the stippling over here. So some of this texture, the texture is on the sides of the, of the base of uh, the bottle, and we're kind of looking at them straight on. So what we're seeing, those little dots we're seeing, is more of like the reflections that we can see through the edges of the glass. So if that if that, if that makes sense or matters, to you, I thought I would mention it. Those little details are what gives things that realistic look. Especially when you're looking at it like not really close, you're kind of looking um, looking at it from a bit of a distance. And I think I'm gonna take a little bit of the Payne's Gray. I wanna apply some of that with a little more precision onto the glass. I feel like I just have a little bit more precision with a brush than I do a pencil, but if you are opposite, then you could do this with a sharp pencil. It's up to you. We're all different. We all prefer working in different ways. And I kind of look for balance. I, I will say, is there an area where I have way too much gray? Is there an area where I don't have enough gray? Is there an area where everything is too light? And I try to um, I try to find find ways to balance that out so the overall composition has a little bit more flow to it.
I think I want another layer of red in here. I feel like it should be a little bit darker. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a mix of the carmine pink and the cherry red and liquefy that and just paint a layer of that in there in the center area where it's actually liquid. And I'm going to use the, the flat brush. It's about, a, I would say, a quarter inch flat. Try to get all the little crumbs all liquefied before you bring it to the paper. And then once you start painting it on, um, keep going until you get it all covered in so you don't end up stopping and it setting and giving you a, a line or an edge. This will be a little bit darker than the original piece just because I went a little darker on the glass area and didn't realize it when I first started off here. I have to say I was a little flustered with the technical issues and I got started off on the wrong foot a little bit. I got an eraser booger there. I just don't want that edge and edge to dry before I can get it spread out. We'll have four different examples by the time I'm done here, but it's fun. It's pretty, and you can do it in a bunch of different a bunch of different shapes. Um, I'm going in with a little bit of an orange color. This is called burnt orange, but any sort of like burnt sienna or kind of a warm brown is going to work well for this. And we're going to use this on the golden collar here just to give it uh, a little bit more of a of a like a golden or brassy effect. And I'm going to put some up here in the sprayer as well. I just feel like that needs to be warmed up a little bit. And just use another small brush to move it out a bit. Now, another reason you want to add water to these is that when you put the like a, a white pen or maybe some white gouache on top for highlights, if you don't if the ink tons underneath isn't liquefied, it'll reactivate that color and mix in with your white. So it's not a big deal if that happens, just let it dry and go over again with your white paint, but it just helps like solve that little issue. I mean, everything's fixable, so it's not a huge deal, but if we can avoid having to fix it, then I like that. I'm just carrying whatever's left of my brush down to the sprayer because it feels like it was getting a little bit lost there. A little bit of the brown willow just just uh, outline the edge of the little straw a bit. Okay, I'm going to go back to that flat brush. I'm looking at the facets. I just want to make sure that nothing is too too rigid and bold up here. So I'm just kind of going in with a damp brush and um, Softening certain areas that just look a little bit too dark, like maybe they didn't get um, blended in, or maybe they've got just a really harsh line that didn't get liquefied. And if I can spread the color around a little bit, even though it's darker than my original, I think it's going to work. And also, if you're looking uh, at your piece and you're thinking, I don't have enough definition here or there. You can always go in with a fine liner. The Derwent line makers are waterproof, but you, that doesn't mean you can't use them on top of your work as well. So you can use them under or over. But I don't think I'm going to need that because I did get a lot of darks in this version, but I, I did use it a little bit on my original just to bring an edge here and there. Just because you're using a fine liner doesn't mean you have to outline everything. You can use it very selectively. I want a, I want just a little crisp, sliver of dark there so I'm going to take the Payne's gray and I'm just going to pick up a little bit on this flat brush. I have an easier time doing a straight line when I use a flat brush than when I use a round brush sometimes. So I'm just going to touch that in there. Now I'm going to give this a really good dry before I add any pen work. You definitely want to do that because um, if you touch a gel pen or a, a fine liner pen to your wet paper, it's going to 
pick up some of that water and it could ruin your pen, especially a felt tip pen. So I'm gonna use my cute little heat tool or hair dryer or whatever you have and give this a good dry. I'm going to use some paint pens. I actually might go with a chunkier one here because I did look so dark. So I also am going to grab an acrylic paint pen, but you can use um, any gel pens or paint pens you like. Um, I'm just gonna, I like to test it on like a scrap. I don't like to go right in with a paint pen on, um, on my artwork unless I know it's like working and ready to go. And I'm going to put in my most bold highlights first. I have such big chunky dark areas here, but I was I, I'm thinking that it would be nice just to kind of break that up. If you didn't go as dark as I am, you probably don't need to do this. And I'm not gonna do this everywhere. Uh it's just gonna be because I I went so dark in my first layer. And I want to basically I'm basically correcting, let's be honest, I'm basically correcting some mistakes that I made, and that's what's so great about a white pen is it is it is the, um, it erases so many sins that we make with our art. So <laughs> we're going to, we're going to have ourselves some white pen time here. And I can stipple in some little reflections in here. I think I'll just do it on the lighter area because I think that might be a little too bold for that. This is a thick pen too. I'm going to touch up that. Uh, smudge. All right. Okay. I just want to get those really big parts in first because I just needed to brighten it up and figure out where I needed to go value wise. Now your gel pens will come in different thicknesses. I generally like a nice thick uh, one seven, like yeah, like a ten to find the ring a little bit thicker. Oh, this is the one that I use a lot. It's a um, a Uniball Signo Broad. And I find that it just, in Maine, for whatever reason, our climate, this this they seem to last a little bit longer than, say, um, like a jelly roll. I don't know why. Some different climates, you'll have successes with different pens. And I didn't realize that until I started talking to other artists that always have trouble with the pens that I love and the pens that I can never get to last for any amount of time work great for them. So it's kind of a little bit of a trial and error what's going to work the best for you. Now we could take this gel pen and sharpen up the edges of some reflections that I had made with the, the paint pen. I'm just thinking what edges would catch the light and if I have too much of, a, of an edge or dark or I feel like I want to flatten something out I can make a line that goes across it. I want highlights on the sticky outy part of this uh this collar there we need some in the center I'm gonna add just a little there's like these little rhinestones that are around the collar that I'm just kind of dabbing in some pen to give the impression of slivers of highlight. Had some more little dots over here from the, that texture. Where I thought the uh, the paint pen was a little too bold. I'm adding some in the gel pen because it's a little bit uh, more mellow. A little finer tip. It doesn't be quite a harsh line. And I find using the pen at a 90 degree angle with the paper gives me the best results with gel pen. Putting your bright highlights next to your darkest shadows also gives you a really nice contrast and can um, really give you that sparkle. I 
It's coming together. It's coming together. And feel free to take your time. Um, on my Instagram, if you want to tag me with your finished artwork, I'm at Lindsay Weirich on Instagram. But if you scroll back a bit on my Instagram page, you're going to see the actual photo I took of my perfume bottle. Uh, if you want to have that to look at while you're working, I think I posted it on my blog as well. If you just search a frugal crafter, you'll find my blog. But uh, I know I posted the reference photo on Instagram as well. And a lot of times, I'll like I'll have my my little first piece that I did, but I will look and see what my new piece needs because every time I paint something even if, if it's the same thing I always change some different things and maybe in a different mood I'm feeling a little differently about something and I just paint it differently and uh it's not even something that I consciously do it's just um it's just what happens you know the more you paint something I think that you know you just you just change it up a little bit every time at least I do anyway not intentionally. Now that you would even see clear spots going through the um, the top of this, the faceted areas. So you would see, you can see random little streaks and marks throughout it. So don't feel like you have to make it exactly like what mine is. All right. If you want to have any other details in here, I would suggest doing them with a sharpened pencil and not adding water. I feel like every layer that you do, you should have a little bit less going on. Um, so you don't cover up all the work that you've done, all the baseline work. It's kind of like you go broad and you work into detail and then you work into, um, you work in, you add more detail as you go, but you're adding less overall media. Like I want to, I want this to be a little bit more richer in color. So I'm just going in with the cherry pencil and going over some of my darker areas that I want to maybe have a little more color in them. They're dark, but maybe they need a little bit more color. Anything that looks fuzzy, maybe not sharp enough, like this right here, it looks a little fuzzy to me. I'm going to go in here with the with the pencil, sharpen it up. You can use water-soluble pencils dry as well. we got a few more minutes, but keep in mind there will be a replay available on the Michaels YouTube channel on Monday. Hopefully, with uh, the closed captioning, will be nice and accurate. So if the audio is low, you'll be able to do that. If you do, you can go in and liquefy like that. It came out way too rough. I'm just going to go in and liquefy it. Just avoid the gel pen areas because if you add water over the gel pens, it will um, it will lift them up, and you'll get kind of like a milky a milky uh, smear on there. And this is just the point where you go in and you have little, little dabs, little hints, little bits to accent and make everything pretty. Sometimes I'll do like little dots. Um, if I feel like it just needs a little bit of pizzazz, I'll just make some like little circles especially if i have an area that i feel like it's a little there's a little bit too much dark in it uh probably not over an area that i've just accented with more um with more pencil if i haven't liquefied it but i can go in and add little almost like little polka dots and it'll look like it's catching light like from light bulbs in the air And I think that will pretty much do it for us. Um, like I said, you could 
you know, you could spend as much time as you wanted on this and, you know, take it, take it to as realistic as you want to. So I do very much appreciate you sticking with me through these technical difficulties. I know that this video quality and audio quality was not at the level that we hope to bring to you from myself and Derwent and Michaels. Um, so please come back again and uh, and we will have ourselves sorted out. But um, I do appreciate you being here. On behalf of Michaels and Derwent, my name is Lindsay Weirich, the Frugal Crafter. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for watching. And if you finish up this project, tag me on Instagram at Lindsay Weirich. You can tag Michael Stores and Derwent Art. And we would love to see what you created based on this tutorial. Till next time, happy crafting and be creative. Have a great day, guys. Bye.